agencies, if you need to do any data cleanup in your management system, you could put that on the checklist because you will touch every client over 365 days. Well, and you're doing that same thing for every customer. So not only is every single staff member doing it the same, but every staff member is treating every single client the exact same way. All right. Well, I'm joined here with the ladies of APP, at least some of them, not all of them, but some of them. So today we are going to be talking about the anatomy of a great renewal call so that we have a good structure for how to handle renewals, how to handle these renewal reviews. And I've said it many, many times before, one of the challenges we have with renewal reviews, if there's no structure, is people get on the phone and just say, anything new, everything good? Okay, bye. And then the person gets the rate in the mail and they're like, what's this? So the importance of having a plan and strategy for the renewal calls is huge, but I am joined here today by Therese Potter and Bobby Fernandez. Do you guys want to say good morning? Hello. Good morning. Hello. Welcome to our video. We're happy to be here. Video podcast. And I did pull them up on an 8 a.m. meeting the weekend, the Monday after the time change. So it's an 8 a.m. meeting that feels like a 7 a.m. meeting. (laughs) It does. (laughs) All right. Obviously, we're doing our course launch, which is a renewal review calls. And this is one of the things that we've been known for is installing renewal reviews into agencies because they are very difficult. They're tricky. There's a lot of false beliefs out in the universe about them. And our goal is to make them easy, fun, and awesome. And so today, we want to talk a little bit about the structure. So I'm just going to give a quick rundown of the structure. So then we can dive into each one. The first one is getting prepared to make the call. And we're going to talk a little bit about what that looks like. The next is the intro so that we get people hooked. I should make that back. The next is the voicemail script. So lo and behold, most people don't pick up for a phone number they don't know. Bobby, do you pick up for a phone number you are not aware of on your cell phone? We're lucky if I ever even have my ringer on. So the fact (laughs) that if I see a call come through that I don't know, most likely not. Yes. And, you know, you have to be careful. Maybe it's outside the zip code or area code. So it is something that people will wait to see the voicemail. So we have to have a good voicemail. Next up, how do we start the call so we don't scare people off and say, oh, this is a spam sales call. I don't want to be here. So we have to have a hook in line that gets them engaged quickly. Then we go ahead and update contact information and we do a review. So we ask review questions. Then we go ahead and talk about coverages and any updates. Then after all that, we talk about price, because if we talk about price too early in the conversation, Therese, how does that usually go? Uh, You mentioned something and then you find something that's missing and you add it and then it goes up. And then you have to tell the customer that you before you said it was this price and now it's this price because the coverage was added. So it's best to wait until you're done with your review because you may also find something to make it go down. Yes, it's like a little game of shoots and ladders. So we might apply a discount and up coverages. And so the price, if we give it too early, is most likely not the actual price. The other thing is once I talk about price to you, Therese, guess what's in your head? That price. (laughs) How do I get that down? (laughs) Yeah. How do I pay that? A lot of people don't even realize what they're currently paying. So now we we need to frame this the correct way. We're going to talk a little bit about how do we do that. Then we're going to talk a little bit if we have to remarket. What does that look like? You know, do we vet the remarket? And then the conclusion of the call is how do we wrap it up to set timeframes, conclude, ask for a referral, so show gratitude. So I want to just start off by saying, I think where a lot of people get tripped up on the renewal calls is they look at it like, oh my gosh, this is more work where I look at it like it's more opportunity. We don't stop people from going ahead and working on new business opportunity, but we think working the current book is too much work of warm leads that have already said yes to us. And we're trying really hard as this market changes to identify saying you can grow from your current book of business. And these renewal review calls are the strategy to grow from your current book of business. But if you don't, nobody's going to do them and have this concerted strategy. I am excited to talk about this today. I think the world of renewal review calls. And I know I get a lot of hate out there because not everybody does. (laughs) But then once they try it, it changes everything. Yeah. I say once once it gets installed, it changes everything. The first couple of months are definitely a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a rocky road, but that's just like anything. Like if you start learning how to run, what does it feel like the first mile you run? Oh my gosh. (laughs) Yeah. So the first, the first couple of months of renewal calls, they feel awful. And that's why not a lot of people are doing them. But that's also what's going to set you apart from the competition. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about getting ready for a call. I'm a big believer of checklists. The reason I love checklists so freaking much 
<laughs> is the idea that I can at 3.30 on a Thursday review an account without a lot of brain cells. And so if we can get everybody using a format to review the policies before they call the person, we now know what we want to talk to them about. And I know, Bobby, you took a look at our commercial lines one this week. It's really just a page and a half with a lot of, you know, it sounds like a page and a half, but it's a page and a half of a lot of very good detail. And there's a lot of boxes just in case there's multiple policies. So when you were looking at that this weekend, what were your thoughts as far as getting ready for the call? I love a checklist myself too, just because I don't have to think about it. And then I know that I'm always meeting expectations as well. I can always go above and beyond, but at least I know that I'm covering my agency by using a checklist and having everything right there in front of me. And I'm also doing the best job for the client at the same time. And lo and behold, the great news is agencies, if you need to do any data cleanup in your management system, you could put that on the checklist because you will touch every client over 365 days. So if you do this, you can have a lot of cleanup in your management system, which I know a lot of people are in the process of, let's just say, the pre-call prep is really just contact information. What do we have? What do we not have? A quick check on the rate. And I want to be very clear. We do not freak out if the rate's gone up. There could be a reason. And the person might not freak out. So it could be that a new truck was added. It could be that, you know what, in commercial lines, they've grown. So great news. That's the, the price you pay for growing a business. Your insurance goes up. We also then do a discount review, a coverage review, And I want to ask Therese this question because a lot of times you see people start the renewal review calls and they do what I call, they do scuba diving versus snorkeling. They want to go through the bowels of the management system and maybe there's an old management system they still have a log into and they want to go find the original application from 25 years ago. And as opposed to finding the year of the roof, let's just say, they must find this one box to check it off because our brains and insurance are trained applications, make them perfect. You cannot submit unless you have every field. It will reject everything. And I really try hard to tell people, this is just your notes for a call. This is not going anywhere. This is not going to a company. You don't need to spend 10 minutes scouring through trying to find everything. And by the way, if it's taking 10 minutes, you need to label your stuff better. <laughs> <laughs> I know what Bobby was thinking. right there. Preach, please. <laughs> yeah. Therese, you know, when you see people kind of going above and beyond, which is a good thing, and it's it's reformatting your brain, right? There, nobody's doing anything wrong, but we're only going to talk to half these people. So if you spend 10 minutes looking for one document for somebody who might not get on the phone, that's a huge waste. What, do, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think we've all been there. I know I've been there. And it's frustrating when you spend 15 to 20 minutes on a policy and then you call and you never speak to the person. And you're just like, what did I just waste all that time for? Then you start, if if you're a self-reflector, you start going, wait a minute. And then, you know, I saw the word scuba dive and snorkel. And I was like thinking to myself, okay, scuba dive, you go down to the bottom, snorkel, you just kind of float across the top. Oh, okay. So we need to think about floating across the top, just skimming. And like all of us read these days, we need to skim exactly how we read, because how many of us actually read every single word when we're reading, especially online? Um, We usually skim. So we need to make sure that we're skimming for important details and not scuba diving and getting way in there and getting lost, because then we go down rabbit holes and we're looking for the application and we're looking for a signature and then we're looking for, you know, proof of this car and the license, silly stuff that we don't even really need. So we've got to realize that it's that we have to value our time to get these done properly. And I think once you get in a rhythm, you learn how to snorkel. Yeah, the fear is always, what if they ask me about it on a call? And I say, you say, let me look into that. Right. So now also too, it could be scuba diving down to the bottom to find a buried treasure, only to find that it's completely different when you talk to the person because they never told you. The idea is snorkel because you need the oxygen. You don't have the oxygen to go down and and, and find hidden treasure. You just need to stay at the top of the top of the line. And that's our best advice on on that front. So after you have the checklist, and I just want to say something, if you want to see this, you can go into the blog, you can go into the podcast you can go on YouTube. There's a link to download. We have a, we're showing actually giving away our personal lines, renewal review call checklist. So you can actually download it. So you can follow along right here if you want to see it. It's a huge gift. It's also the farm and commercial ones are also included in our course launch. So you want to check those out for sure. The next step is 
a voicemail. Okay. We're probably gonna get up on a soapbox now because I think sometimes people make renewal calls and they hope the person doesn't pick up. And I'm like, you are throwing bad juju out in the universe. Okay. Like if you're making it, hoping the person to come up, you should maybe do something else and come back to this after you have like a coffee break or a diet Coke break or something, get your head back in the game. Cause one of two things is going to happen. That person's going to pick up and they're going to be a talker and you're going to hate your life. You're going to have 40 year like, oh my gosh, this is not where I want to be with my life. Or two, you just did all this prep work, right? Now we're going to do this prep work. Your stats are going to end up below 40% because you're leaving what I call a weenie lame voicemail. And we all just agreed. We don't pick up for people we don't know. I look at the visual voicemail and I'm looking for keys. Is this important or not important? And if we all think that people know your agency name, your name, you're wrong. They probably know the carrier because they pay them or we hope that they're paying them and not you. And they know that they have their homeowners with Safeco, but they have no idea who you are. So when you're calling them out of the blue for the first year ever, guess what's going to happen? They have no idea who you are. And if they don't know, they're not going to call you back. We think that people know their insurance company, but they don't. So you have to say something that reminds them of the insurance company. So I would usually say, you know, agency performance partners, your insurance company, we cover your auto, you know, give them you know, tips on on who you are so they know that you actually know them. Yeah, and the homeowners that's escrowed in, I don't even pay travelers. Right. I pay PHH. <laughs> so yeah. we have to leave a compelling voicemail and agencies have acquired other agencies. So don't, again, assume people know your agency name. We have a lot of new people. You need your name, your agency, the policy type and the company. And you need to have a strong call to action. If you make it sound like a courtesy call, Like I travel every week, right? I get all these courtesy calls. I just want to know how you would rate your national rental car. I'm like, I I do this five times a week. Like, no, I can't. I can't keep up with all your surveys. (laughs) I appreciate you, but please. But you will know when I stop renting. (laughs) And I will fill out the survey when there's a problem. But until then, I'm good. So you have to get them a call to a hook with a call to actually say like, I got your renewal. There's some things I need to go over with you this week. Now, some people freak out and say, that's too harsh. I don't want to alarm people. Well, alarm them. We haven't talked to them in five years. And we've heard stories on commercial lines and personal lines. Commercial lines in particular, $5,000 BOP, no big deal. The company had exploded, was doing international sales. And through the renewal review, they actually needed a $100,000 policy. So one of the agencies missing out on the revenue and the company was wildly underinsured. So yes, we do need to talk to people to make sure their insurance is Right. So Bobby, do you have any thoughts on leaving compelling voicemails that entice everybody to call back? I mean, I think if you entice people to at least call you back, you know what you're dealing with, right? I think we can, if we don't call people and we don't know, guess who has their name in their agency management system, your competitor down the street, and they're going to call them when their renewal comes up. So I think you really have to get in there and talk to people and compel them really to call you back because you need to know what you're dealing with when you're walking into the renewal situation. Amen. Well, I think that our goal should be for callback. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, sometimes we would say, you know, this is Therese from your insurance agency and we have some information for you. We need to hear back from you as soon as possible you know, a hook, something to get them to actually call back because you really do want to talk to them. And then we need to send out an email and or a text message just as another blanket message. Because I know if I got the email, I'd be like, oh, I probably need to do that. (laughs) It also stays on people's radar screens a little bit more versus voicemail where I'm like, oh, I forgot all about that because I read it and listened to it. Now I got to go deal with it. So our next step is we got to talk to the person about the update. So after, so I take that back, we leave a voicemail. Now we got to get contact information. You cannot give wow customer service if you cannot get a hold of people. And we want email, phone, cell phone, you know, all the people who are on the policy, not just one person. Lord help the person who tries to get me on the phone. So if my insurance, if something serious, they need to also call my husband. Now I'm not saying he's going to do a good job on the insurance. I'm just saying they need to call him so that he calls me. It says we have a problem. <laughs> it's it relaying the message, right? <laughs> yeah. Or how do you know people aren't, you know, somebody's, the roles have changed, mm-hmm. you know, maybe somebody's now working from home more and they're, it's easier for them to deal with the insurance. We need everybody's contact information. 
if only just so everybody knows if something happens and you don't have everybody that that's a problem. So we need to do that. And then we need to start reviewing the account. So this is getting updated questions. And lo and behold, you may be shocked at what you find when you start asking people questions. So we all assume nobody has anything. Nobody has any money. Nobody's doing anything. Everyone's going to tell them if they start driving for Uber and everybody's going to tell them when they put additions on their house and everybody's going to tell them when to do new products and services. Everybody's going to tell them when they get remote workers in, in North Carolina and in Tennessee. Of course, you're going to tell your insurance company, right? Yeah, I was just going to say when everybody, when everybody started working remote, nobody really reached out to clients to find out if they were working from home or not. And then all of a sudden you get this influx of people calling in to say, well, my vehicle needs to be rated for pleasure because I don't drive it anymore. Uh, so if if we were calling out, that we would have solved that problem by asking them before they called to tell us. Yeah, I mean, even think about it. Like you know, when when you guys get hired, we put you on our policy as a home office because guess what? <laughs> You're not coming to our no longer in existence office. <laughs> we didn't get all these updates, questions, and this is a great opportunity to cross sell, increase coverage. Talk to the person, talk to them like a person, not a policy. And I think sometimes agents get a little freaked out. It's like, what if I find out they are driving for Uber? Well, then we put an endorsement on their policy. What if they're with a company that doesn't offer it? Then we need to remarket them to one that does because they have an open exposure, but that's more work. But the customer has an open exposure. (laughs) What happens if we don't ask the question, I guess, is the bigger issue, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I've been doing this so long. We've had people ask a question. I remember one, and this woman got on the on the biweekly call we have with Renewal Review Call Program, and she was just like, I'm so stressed. And I was like, what is going on? She's like, I did the renewal review the way you asked. And I was like, great, what happened? She's like, I asked the person if they had any other properties. Okay. She goes, he has a hundred investment properties that we don't know about. And I was like, in my head, I'm like, cha-ching. She's yes. like, how am I going to quote all these? He wants me to quote all of them. And she was like mad. I was like, calm <laughs> down, <laughs> chillax. I was like, they're not all going to come up for renewal on the same day, first of all. And second of all, you could make a whole team effort here. You know, mm-hmm. like this is this is cool. And she's just like, oh, it's so much work. I was just like. I love it when when a customer drives up to make a payment in a, a car that has the Uber sign, walks in to make the payment, makes the payment. The person who's taking the payment looks out and sees the Uber sign, doesn't say a word and lets the dude walk away. And it's a personal policy. And I saw I was busy and I looked out and I was like, did you ask them if they're driving for Uber? And she's like, well, no. I'm like, did you not see him drive up in a car that says Uber? Does he have a policy for no, I'm like you need to get on the phone and call him. <laughs> and so we so missed stuff. So many people changing jobs, life insurance, like there's so much opportunity in the calls. That's why I look at them as opportunity. They are a sales opportunity if you look at them correctly. I shouldn't even say sales, they're a growth opportunity because we'll grow through retention, cross selling, referrals, et cetera. So in the renewal review call, there's a whole checklist of these questions, right? And you can customize them. Some people want to ask more questions than others. That's that's your call. We have our recommendations. And now after we do the reviews, when we go into coverages. So again, we're, we keep pushing off price. We're not going to talk about price. And there's scripts on how we handle that. That's a podcast for a different day. But let's look at the coverages. And the form will actually light up bright red. Bing, bing, bing. If the coverage doesn't meet the agency standard. So let's just say it's auto insurance, a 50, 100, the agency standards, 100, 300. It'll be bright red in front of the team. So that that way we can talk about it. Now, my stance is they don't have to change the coverage, but we need to educate, encourage, not just say, I think you need 100, 300. No, I'm good. Okay. We document. We need to encourage and make sure people know what that means and why they should have it and what it costs to make the actual assumption. But we go ahead and go through that and we need to document, document, document any declinations in coverage recommendations. But you'd be surprised how many people get coverage increases on rental car reimbursement, water sewer backup, cyber liability, EPLI, some of the smallest things, like not that those two last ones are small, but on personal lines policies, yeah, no, that, that sounds good. You should bump that up. Yeah, we should bump that up. Yeah, we should bump that up. It's like, oh, now it's not about price. Well, and you're you're doing a great service to your client by making sure that they're well covered and you're covering your agency for E&O. 
especially when you ask them a question and they decline it, because then you've got proof on a form that you actually spoke to them and they declined it. I think we have to remember too, we're, we're account managers, right? But we are risk managers. We are here to help manage people's risk and not to just data enter a policy every day, all the time. That's all we do is just data enter, data enter. We have to step back and remember we have a professional license. We have an education that we come with and we're giving value to someone else by helping them manage their risk. If you're avoiding the risk, you're avoiding your job. You're in the wrong place. Exactly. So after we go to the coverage review, now we talk about price and our stance on it is this. If it's the price is above the agency's tolerance level, we should talk about it. Don't be scared. Talk about it. You did not cause the price. You're the person that can help them with the price. Okay. If it's below the agency standard or at the agency standard, and this is for the entire package, not by policy. This is a big, big comment because sometimes maybe one policy goes down, one goes up. We need to look at the total annual, not policy by policy. You'll drive yourself nuts looking at a policy by policy. But if it goes up, we just say, so your rate went up X per month. We're seeing, uh, you know, about that. But I, I want to go through your discounts and see if we can get that down. And then you pivot right on into discounts. You don't dwell on it. We don't go hemming and hawing. We don't apologize. Just I'm sorry, rates went up. I'm so sorry. We go into solution, 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 because a lot of times we can change deductibles. We can go e-policy. We can add telematics. Maybe they're not driving as much. Maybe there's different discounts. Maybe they're part of an association. All sorts of things that we can add in that after we delay, give the price. If it's above, we then dive into discounts. We don't dive into a remarket. Everyone's shaking heads. Yes, understood. Definitely, we we need to review everything we can before we go to a remarket. It's very important to check for everything we can possibly find. Exactly. And then after that, if we do need to remarket, we vet the remarket. We actually put on the sheet qualifications for remarket, amount of increase, the type of policy it is. You know, like is it a client we want to keep? Do they have open claims? We go through everything to make sure that we should actually vet the remarket. And if not, we go back to the discounts because it's amazing and a miracle when people go ahead and start declining discounts, right? I don't want this. I don't want this. I don't want this. Well, then you want to pay what you want to pay. And then our last step is to conclude the call. So if we're going to do anything, add endorsements. If we're going to go ahead and do cross sales, if we are going to remarket, which by the way, there's a time and place to do that. We need to set a date that we're going to do it and confirm with the client exactly what's going to happen as a recap. And then we go ahead and we thank them for their business. And we just simply end the call with, if you know anyone that needs help with insurance, let us know. That is a nice, soft referral ask. And the whole goal of this checklist and this form is, again, it's the end of the day on Thursday. I'm tired. The person calls back in. I just need to ask the next question in line so that everybody's doing the same thing uniformly and that we're not winging the calls, and that we're giving people the right guidance and respect that they deserve. Well, and you're doing that same thing for every customer. So not only is every single staff member doing it the same, but every staff member is treating every single client the exact same way, kind of uniforms that, and and shows the importance to every single client, not just specific ones. And don't forget to have carrier lists of all the discounts that certain carriers have because some carriers have discounts, others don't. Uh, Progressive has a good student discount, I think they still do, in some states, and other companies do not. So you you could assign each staff member a different carrier and have them look at all the discounts and make a discount checklist as well for each carrier. Woohoo! <laughs> so that's our mission. That's what we're sticking to. That's how you do a renewal review call. Now, the good news is, guys, we have our course that's launching. So from April 15th to April 30th, um, you can buy our Apex Retention course as a standalone course. It's the only two weeks you're going to be able to do it. You will not be able to do it after that. On our core signature courses, we don't offer them standalone for purchase at any point other than a launch. Or you can subscribe to our school at $2.95 a month and go ahead and get all everything, sales, retention, how to handle remarkets, all the things. It's a steal. A lot of stuff for a really good price. A steal. So check it out, but get your team involved in making renewal review calls. It'll make all the difference in the world. So thank you, Bobby. Thank you for Therese for being my blog banter cohorts today. 
No problem. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay.